When I was a corporate manager of Fairchild Industries in 1974 through 77, I met the late Dr. Werner von Braun in early 74. At that time, von Braun was dying of cancer, but he assured me that he would live a few more years in order to tell me about the game that was being played, that game being the effort to weaponize space, to control the earth from space and space itself. Von Braun's purpose in life during the last years of his life, his dying years, was to educate the public and decision makers about why space-based weapons are a dumb, dangerous, destabilizing, too costly, unnecessary, unworkable, undesirable idea. The strategy that Werner von Braun taught me was that first the Russians are going to be considered to be the enemy. In fact, when I met him in 74, they were the enemy, the identified enemy. We were told that they had killer satellites. We were told that they were coming to get us and control us, the dirty commies, that whole story. First, the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. We heard a lot about terrorism. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. We now call them nations of concern. But he said that would be the third enemy against whom we would be needing to build space-based weapons. And the next enemy was asteroids. Now at this point, he kind of chuckled the first time he said it. Asteroids against asteroids were going to build space-based weapons. So it was funny then. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card. And remember, Carol, the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens. And all of it, he said, is a lie. He didn't mention a timeline, but he said that it was going to be speeding up faster than anybody could possibly imagine. That the effort to put weapons in space was not only based on a lie, but would accelerate past the point of people even understanding it until it was already up there and too late. In 1977, I was at a meeting in Fairchild Industries in a conference room called the War Room. This is 1977, and they were talking about creating a war in the Gulf region when there was $25 billion in the space-based weapons program that yet had not been identified. It wasn't called the Strategic Defense Initiative, at least, until 1983. This weapon system then had obviously been going on for some time that I didn't know anything about. So I stood up in this meeting in 1977 and it said, I'd like to know why we're talking about space-based weapons against these enemies. I'd like to know more about this. Would somebody tell me what this is about? Nobody answered. They went on with this meeting as though I hadn't said anything. Dr. Carol Rawson is one of over 450 witnesses who have come forward with inside information that they were told to shut up about. That first clip was from the Disclosure Project Witness Testimony series on Google Video. Listen to what she says, because I believe it could be very important. Here's what she said at the Press Club in Washington in 2001. Good morning, my name is Carol Rawson. In 1974, after being a sixth grade school teacher, I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space. And I said, uh, you know, teachers don't stop until June. He said, no, you have to understand. This is February. And we have to prevent the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system, the first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists. Then there would be third world countries. Now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. 
Well, at the time, I kind of laughed when he said asteroids, and when he said extraterrestrials, I knew I wasn't going to deal with that subject. And now we hear on the news just today, this week, that they've slid in another enemy. Only this time we're going to protect our satellites. In other words, we have to have some reason to spend these trillions to waste these dollars on a space-based weapon system, and they're all lies. This is a system, he told me, that would never protect anyone. Even back then, he talked about suitcase bombs. He talked about chemical, viral, bacterial, bad biological warfare that these space-based weapons would never protect us against. And then he told me that, in fact, if you travel around the world, which I did after he died in 1977, I met with people in over 100 countries who were friends. They didn't want to build space-based weapons. I became a space and missile defense consultant. And I worked with people around the world. I became uh, an advisor to the People's Republic of China. They don't want to build a space-based weapon system. And he told me back then that they didn't. He said, go to Russia. They're considered to be the enemy. I got on a plane by myself. When I got to Russia, I had a list of people that I had read out of the newspaper. Chernenko was in office then. He was the only one I didn't get a chance to meet. They introduced me to everyone when I got there. And when I got back, I said, oh my Lord, this man is telling the truth. There are, is no threat. And I've been waiting until this day for 27 years. And I'm expecting the spin to happen because he also explained to me that in the, as a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons. And now we should expect the spin because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon, then we have to consider that they do have these weapons. So now they do have these weapons, so now we have to build these weapon systems. And that's the formula, except that it's all based on a lie. And we have witnesses here today that have shown you that these extraterrestrial beings, that these craft that have come here are now not UFOs, they're identified flying objects. And we know that they have beings in them. And we have witnesses here who have told you that they can shut down our missile silos. They can stop a rocket going into space that's a test. We have witnesses here who have worked in the classified departments who have the courage to come forward here to support what Werner von Braun told me back in 1974 to 77. And I will testify before the Congress that when I founded the Institute for Security and Cooperation in Outer Space, which I shut down a few years ago because I didn't believe we had a chance with this huge, integrated around the world, complex weapon system, that we had any chance at all of transforming that war industry into a space industry that could provide benefits, like Dr. Greer has said, of global warming. We can end that situation of that problem. We can end the energy crisis. We can put, build now non-polluting technologies. Werner von Braun used to tell me that we could have cars back then that w drove around off the ground. He described this to me on beams so that we have no pollution on this planet and we can solve the problems of the people that are urgent and potential and the other animals and the other cultures on earth and in space and we can end the arms race without dislocating the industry jobs without disrupting the economy by transforming Werner von Braun told me the war industry into a global cooperative space industry that will provide he said Finally, more jobs and profits on this planet than during any hot or cold wartime, more products and services that can be applied directly to solving the problems of this planet, and we can have a whole planet now that lives on pe in peace on Earth with all the cultures on Earth and with all the extraterrestrial cultures in space. And these are words that Werner von Braun told me in 1974, and I will testify before the Congress under oath about everything I have said and more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Note the part about first it will be the Russians, then it will be the terrorists, then it will be the final card will be the faked alien invasion. This is what she said back in 2001, before 9-11 happened. And those of you who have been keeping up with 9-11 and the truth movement and information that has come out about the attacks know that the so-called war on terror is a complete lie 
and we were never after Osama bin Laden, and that's all being exposed now, just like the fake WMDs were exposed in Iraq. Most people are too propagandized that they are unwilling to believe this and won't even look into the evidence. The rest don't care because they don't think it concerns them, or because they feel powerless to do anything about it, and I tend to agree with them. The criminals who caused 9-11, who had the connections to all the inside security at the World Trade Centers and the cooperation of the intelligence community in the White House, will never be prosecuted for their crimes. They got away with it. And even if, by some miracle, we did open up a congressional investigation, prosecute those responsible for 9-11, and put them all in prison, it would be like putting a band-aid on a cancer. 9-11 was only a symptom, and we need to treat the disease. Because once the war on terror fails to give the government a reason to funnel billions of taxpayer dollars to corporate interests, they will simply find another excuse. Here we have insiders warning us that aliens will be used as the next excuse. This is why I have been warning people about the 2012 stuff, and to be very skeptical about it, if and when first contact happens. Don't believe it right away. I know you want to. The people in charge are using all this money to build an Orwellian-style police state. This is the type of future that they feel most comfortable with, because they have always been in power, and now that they are beginning to lose their power, they are very, very scared. They don't want the kind of future that you and I want. They want everything to stay the same or go back to the way it was. And that's not going to happen. The world is changing very quickly, and it's all up to us what kind of world it will change into. Here's a few interesting organizations that are doing various things to accelerate the future and progress. Nassim Harriman also has a YouTube channel now, so you might want to check that out. But the real change and the real future progress is going to come from you. So please do your part by helping to spread this information. Because the first battlefield in this war exists in the hearts and the minds of the people.